question. Dow down a thousand points yesterday. What were you looking at specifically on your Bloomberg terminal? Two words, real rates. We need to look at where real rates are. Real rates determine risk premium. Real rates infect everything. As long as they're going up, risk appetite is not going to be in a good place. Can, a, that. can a central bank affect real rates, the, the, the present level, the first derivative, the second derivative of real rate movement? Well, they can affect their headline levels, you know, by uh, massaging uh, things or whatever the communication is going to be at the front end. But the yield curve, you know, has its life of its own. Um, unless the Fed suddenly announces yield curve control, which I don't think is going to happen anytime soon, I think they should just let the market find the cleared level for where real rates need to be. If they're prepared to push that forward, allow financial conditions to tighten, then so be it. But they've got to manage it. Headline rates, real rates, FX and equity valuations, these four, they interact with each other all the time. You can't pull for all four levers all the time. Well, Jeff, let's talk about a couple of those interactions. We've talked a lot about the relationship between real rates and equities. Real rates up a lot the last three weeks, tech down a lot off the back of it. Real rates up a lot. What has FX done, Jeff? That's the link that's broken down a bit for me. What about you? Well, real rate differentials, and because especially if you look at dollar versus EM, and I want to be specific here, dollar versus LATAM, dollar versus, say, Central and Eastern Europe, um, Fed actually isn't ahead. We've just had the Hungarian Central Bank, you know, three minutes ago, surprise to the upside. You know, they're hiking 50 basis points rather than 30 basis points right now. They are managing inflation, hitting hard inflation much more aggressively compared to the Fed. Look at all of what LATAM is doing right now. So this time around, rather than lead, you know, the U.S. is following one area where this is not happening, Asia, you know, China's real rate problem is actually the other way around. Uh, so right now, FX, you know, it is taking a life of its own. That's why EMFX is still in a good place. So, Jeff, there's some really interesting trades that emerge from that then. Within G10, within EM, there are all these different things going on, Jeff. Are you saying there's not going to be this broad dollar story through 22? Absolutely not a broad do a dollar story through this year. And let's look at you know what iFlows, our own positioning indicators, are indicating. What does the market want to own? Once they're in Aussie and G10, potential for rate hikes. We saw CPI surprise the upside last um, uh, overnight. They want to own Brazil right now, one of the best held currencies. Again, real right, rates going up. You just talked about what elections are could uh, harbinger for the country for this year. They are ahead of the Fed right now. You want to own them on the funding side. They don't want to own Swedish krona. Uh, rates not moving anytime soon. Swiss franc yen still relatively underheld. So the carry trade actually is still very much alive and kicking, which you wouldn't associate with a risk off environment. How much does this get predicated on the idea that it will not be a risk off environment, that the Fed mm -hmm. will do this perfectly, thread this needle and won't actually trigger something breaking? Uh, I think you know, there are two elements to that. Firstly, some of the more um, aggressive outcomes out there, such as the Fed, sell Fed selling assets, um, I think that speak the market a bit, perhaps, but it's being gradually priced out. So in that element, agree, um, the Fed is going to manage this slowly. Uh, but on the other side of it, which is perhaps more problematic, growth. Where is growth going to come from? Yes, the U.S. can still advance with tight labor markets as long as household income holds up. But what about China? What about Asia? This used to be the growth engine that we've had for the last 20 years, still struggling more than other places and with opening up. What's going to happen to the export mix, I think, and what's going to happen to their consumer, to their household? I think that's the missing piece of the puzzle here Jeff, globally. At what point does the growth story overtake the rate story in terms of China not necessarily being a mm -hmm. place you want to go because it is softening mm -hmm. rather than a place you do want to go because they're probably going to ease rather than tighten policy? So if I look at where Chinese equity valuations are right now in terms of onshore and also where Chinese real rates are and where the uh, CGB 10-year yields are, it's actually pricing a relatively pessimistic scenario, you know, maybe 5% growth or even weaker. And there are idiosyncratic reasons there. They're not reopening the economy and, uh, you know, COVID and pandemic management, you know, that is not going to come anytime soon. But over the last two or three weeks, we've heard them talk about tax cuts, further relief. It happened overnight as well. If the Chinese consumer can get um, uh, to become alive and kicking and China actually start um, its services balance and uh, can start to turn things around and start to export demand, then that would be a good thing um, globally and can complement what's going on in the US right now. Europe I'm in two minds about right now being impacted you know, by the Ukraine situation. Uh, but overall, I think there is value in Chinese equities and that's what our flows are showing. People are buying Chinese equities right now. Jeff, you, uh, within all the blur of the news and the research, the opinion, the, our heads are spinning right now. Tom Purcelli has a great, great thought from RBC Capital Markets this morning, talking about a Fed that wants to slow growth. Is there, you know, they want to slow the good spending story. Okay, fine. Yeah. Can a central bank affect that? Are we asking too much of central bankers? 
Central bank can absolutely affect that if they have the right levers. And I think in the Fed, the BOE, some others, they do, because you can slow growth in consumption heavy economies by impacting household cash flow, impact their bottom line, raise mortgage rates, you know, raise lending rates. If, if, if consumer uh, fi debt financing costs start to go up, or they're already high in the US and in the UK, then you can slow growth. But the Fed will not try to slow growth, right? The Fed is trying to slow inflation and manage inflation expectations. Slowing down of growth, restraining it, is a byproduct of that, and they want to engineer a soft landing. No central bank will want to engineer a hard landing, let's be clear about that. Uh, Jeff, just quickly, if you've got a UK caller, Sterling, call off the back of this mess with the Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, the mess with the Prime Minister should not impact Sterling only, only until we see a change in fiscal policy. We are bearish Sterling right now on the crosses. I see Euro Sterling higher. But if the national insurance rise is taken away, then the BOE can perhaps hike a bit more. Household cash flow improves, and then Sterling perhaps can recover. So we'll see what happens from number 11.